Yeah, that's something that the president should have called. the same rates that I did earlier, it's true. I'm probably not going to get 20,000. And he's going to get a from him. Are you going to get a direction from him? We're not even bringing forward all the billboards. Is that all of this line for us? We are going to keep all the parking places that you know somewhere. Yeah. Here's the plan. Here's what it costs. You'll have to go back when you get your budget. No, no. You'll have to do the next three conversations with the people. sort of got informed a couple weeks ago that you guys wanted to find out a little more information about oh, all the... Did we lose it? Yeah. You got really when I turn yes. that one on, I probably turn that one off. And if it's okay with the board, I'm going to move around and see the presentation as well. Absolutely. Okay. So 
So it was important to me that you guys sort of wanted to find out about more options in the way of advertising and marketing for the city and really what are all the options. So this is a basic presentation. It doesn't go into a lot of the financial details because that would have made the um, presentation very, very complex and confusing. But it goes into basically all the options that I recommend in the way to market and advertise true that and then what sort of goes into those options and what would be required for those options. And Andrew, do you want feedback from them as you're going through? Yeah, I would, any end? questions you have, please just stop me right ahead and I can answer any questions you have and we can talk about that. So it will be sort of a working presentation. So really the main options that I went through were all of the online, which includes social media, all of the radio, which includes online radio, regional radio, and local radio, um, print, which includes um, news and um, other earned content, which is not as much of an expense for you guys as it is an effort on behalf of the board or on behalf of someone, and then there is minor expenses to that, and then also talk about partnerships. So on online media, we're gonna cover Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, um, MailChimp or one of the mail services, um, blogs, and then working on our online presence as travel websites go. So when going through online media, we have some questions you sort of have to ask because with online media, you're able to target a lot better than a lot of other forms of media. You just have to ask what age, what gender, what location, what demographic, what interests, and what behaviors are you trying to target? Because those are all things that you can do with a lot of these medias because they gather so much information about the individuals. We also have, want to know how do you want to use social media. So social media can be used in many different ways. It can be used as something that's constant and free. It can be used as something that's paid for special events. It can be used for something that's paid and constant for seasonal. It all depends on what direction you want to go and how much money and time and effort you want to put into that type of marketing. And then with that, we'll have to sort of talk about in the future, after we educate about all this, what you think if you wanted to do this in constant or non-constant, what a daily, weekly, monthly budget would look like. And that would really depend on how much content we could get out there. And then what are our marketing goals? The main way that you measure these are reach, traffic, and engagement. So we'll talk about a little about those throughout the presentation. So these are questions for us. Yes. You want us to answer. Uh, yeah, after, we'll, we'll talk about these. This is just a general presentation. We can start talking about what we really want to start targeting, and then that's how we'll actually narrow down how much this is going to cost, where we're targeting, because all of this is very, very specific. On I can, you could have two different buys, ten years apart, and they could be ten thousand dollars different because of who they're reaching, the number of people that are coming through, the number of clicks, all those type of things. So. Um, the first type of marketing we'll talk about is Facebook. This is one that we already um, are active on because we do have a Facebook account that's active and has a lot of followers. So the number one thing and the thing, only thing that the city really has done has boost posts. So that is paying to expand your post beyond the uh, group of people that actually follow that Facebook page. And so you can boost posts anywhere in the world. You can boost posts any age demographic, um, any interests, um, and so that all depends on how large you want to boost the post and how long you want to boost the post and how many people you want that post to reach is all going to depend on how much that costs. Domain ads, those are what you see on the side um, of your Facebook page and those you can target towards age. Same as boosting posts, you can target towards anyone, but those are, um, they aren't as natural as a post because they don't show up in your timeline, they show up on the side. So they are more of an advertisement than a natural marketing push. And then you have video ads. And so this would be, you can actually create video content and it actually does go in the news feed. It is, has to be marked as an ad in the news feed, but it is a way to show your videos to a broader group of people. And so the measurements of these, and this is sort of how they charge you through these, are either cost per click or cost per impression. So 100 impressions mean 100 people see that. And a cost per click is the number of people that actually click on either the post or the advertisement. Andrew, I get, do, you, do you have this in paper form too? I do us? not. Okay. We well, can make that happen if you need yes. it. Do you want it as we're going through? Well, I'd like to make some notes. Sure. Do you have the ability to email it to Raven? Uh, yeah, or you can just, my computer's open, so I just go right now. Okay, do you mind? I don't know what it's called. Yeah, it's called, 
It actually should already be open on there. If you guys don't mind, I'll go right no, in. No, I, yeah. I don't mind at all. I was just going to ask, though, what is the cost per click? What is the cost? It all depends. So it depends on where you're targeting, who you're targeting. It that's that's the. It means like it is, it is it a tenth of a cent to four tenths of a cent? What? No, cost per click is actually more expensive. That could be upwards of one to three dollars because you're actually oh. getting them. Because cost per click means that's usually you're getting them to your website. So they're actually clicking and transferring to your website. So um, cost per click has to do with ads where you're transferring to a different location. Cost per impressions usually has to do with um, posts where you actually, they're not gonna be transferred to a different site, but they're going to interact with that, whether they see it, whether they like it, whether they comment on it. Go do that. Okay, go do yeah. your stuff. Thank you so much. Uh, I wondered yeah. about that because there was a big, that's a big human franchise. Do you have something to say to us? You know, I really don't. I just wanted to say hi. I'm sorry I'm, I'm late. I just wanted to kind of drop in and, and see what was going on. Hi, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, we really yeah. appreciate that. Really? Really? I'm totally impressed. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 So Let us make it in. I'm really going to have sitting on this side of the aisle. Yeah, I thought for sure we were in trouble when you yeah. walked in. I, uh, I oh. know. That's okay. usually a safe presumption. <laughs> okay. Well, it was a late council meeting last night. Uh, yeah, you you, yeah, you kind of yeah, know, Camilla. Yeah. How late did that Was it a good one? It wasn't really that late. It was okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was okay. Uh, how late did you go? Like a quarter to nine. Yeah. But would it begin? Yeah, I should ask you. You have to no. yeah. stay till the bitter end. I have to. <laughs> well, yeah, but when it begins at five. And you go until nine, yeah, nine o'clock, exactly. nine thirty. I was, right. I was, I was dropping. I was yeah, dropping yeah. By that time, I was tough. But it was tough. very interesting. See. Yeah. See there. Yeah. Never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. be there August seventh. You'd be there. Be You'd be there. there. Yeah, yeah wouldn't be prudent not to be. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And what channel is that on? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know, really. Do, do, he do made I, a nice do, announcement, do. too, at the presentation. You, know, you did, didn't you? Yeah, guys, the, we're no longer live because we're going to be doing this. I should have gotten up, but I thought it. Um, we're putting in the time stamping and the, the uh, closed caption. And that yeah. takes a little process, uh, so your stuff won't be on for a few days, maybe early next week. Once I get the process, it'll come up quicker. When city council's going to be on? Probably, <laughs> optimi as I told them, optimistically in two days, realistically early next week. And so why this, um, the presentations are going to be a little more general than specific when it comes to cost and everything is because you can target so specifically or so broadly that it's just intangible without knowing really what you guys are looking for to do any estimates. So the goal that we're trying to come out of all this is to find out what you guys are interested in and then potentially put together three to four media buy plans that sort of give you a general description of how we could spend sixty or eighty thousand dollars in a media buy plan with the things that you recommend and give you maybe one that's more social media heavy and one that's more radio heavy, all those different options. But we need to sort of find what you guys are interested in and what you aren't interested in before we dive into those that sort of steps. And then so um, the next type of marketing is Instagram marketing. Instagram marketing is connected with Facebook, so they get all the metrics that Facebook does. Facebook gathers thousands of pages of information on you, and so that you can target people in every single... Facebook, uh, Instagram is amazing. Yeah, so Facebook and Instagram both use the same um, data, so they're able to target you the same way. Um, 
you pay to sponsor your post. So if we create an Instagram page, what we would do is we would have that be produced naturally. So pictures, activities, events would be uploaded. That would be just natural marketing. That would be completely free. But then when we had something that we wanted to expand the reach of beside the people that just follow us, we would pay to sponsor this. And that would mean that it would look like a natural um, Instagram post, but it would be sponsored to reach a larger audience in either uh, area range, an age range, a demographic range, really any type of um, demographic that we'd want to, or any type of uh, metric that we'd want to pick to target those people. So Andrew, because Facebook and Instagram are tied together, really if we if the board decides to go in one direction, it's we it probably we would encourage them to go in both. Of the we don't have to. It all depends on if they want to spend um, spend the time to create um, an Inst So right now we currently do not have an Instagram, an Instagram. page. So it would take um, it would take some type of management to actually create and manage the Instagram page. Okay. There are plenty of images, activities, events that would be able to be uploaded to those pages pretty easily, but it would take active management to create a successful Instagram page because you can't just put a picture up and wait four months and put another picture up. You have to be actively engaged in your audience. And that's sort of what we do on the Facebook page, try to actively engage them. So it will take management just like the Facebook page. But can't you, once you enter that Instagram post, when you post something on Facebook, hit the button, yes. so it could automatically go on Instagram. Yes, yes. and I'll also be talking about a software called Hootsuite, which is an online social media management platform where you can okay. schedule and plan everything out so you don't actually have to post something at 3 p.m. You can you can sit on Monday and schedule out the, the next week. two weeks of posting right. and then not have to do anything and they will automatically post. And they will post on both. Uh, on any, yeah, on if we have, if we decided yeah. to get a Twitter, we could post on Twitter right. all of those okay. different avenues. Right. Um, so somebody has to do this. Yes. So and so that's once I get to the end of my social media, I'll talk about that. That's where another cost is with social media is there has to be a management behind it. So whether that is um, contractor, whatever that be, there has to be some sort of management behind that, and that would all depend on. Um, roles and positions, but there has to be some type of management behind any type of social media because it is an active engagement instead of a point in place engagement. And so um, here's a, some quick stats that Instagram gives out about um, their um, their advertising, how effective it is. 60% so of the people that discover new products that, or 50% of people discover new products and platforms through Instagram, through um, sponsored ads, because sponsored ads look really organic they look just like anything else, so they can actually entice people to click on them without actually thinking they're clicking on an ad because they look so organic, they look so natural, and usually they're very beautiful. Um, you can also say that 75% of um, Instagrammers takes action after being inspired after a post. It's a younger audience, and the younger audience is do make more sporadic purchases, especially through social media and online, so they take more active action through that. So if you wanted to um, target special events the rate that people would probably um, make action from that post would be higher than through something like news or radio because it is easier tangible for action because they can click on that post and that post can directly transfer them to a website to say buy a ticket for Trinidadio Blues Fest. So it's a very easy one to <laughs> transaction is we done. We do have that on Instagram. We do. And so um, 18 to 29 age range, 55% of the users of that age then 30 to 49 are 28 percent, and only 11 percent are 50 to 64, and 4 percent are 65 and under, as I would guess most of you expected. No, I thought I thought our I thought our age group would be more. I thought we were pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to double check. Double check those numbers, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so um, the third type type of marketing is Snapchat marketing. This is highly. Um, targeted towards the younger generation. Yeah. Um, but it does have interesting ways where you can do things that almost no other social media platform can. One thing that you can do is you can actually um, have free geo filters. So the city of Trinidad currently has one free geo filter. To be completely honest and blunt, it is very unattractive. I, I, I can show you it um, if you would like, but it's, it's not very attractive. So these are actually, as a municipality, we can actually upload geo filters for free because we're a municipality. Municipality, so that is something that is low cost. That you could work with um, a designer to create a new geo filter. It would probably cost you a couple hundred dollars, but it is something exciting because you do use these geo filters, and then those geo filters get shared out to whatever their audience is. So that's 
free range. So what exactly is a geofilter? Let me, uh, 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 Jeffrey, what one you It's just, I'm telling you I'm thinking I know what it is, but I want to verify it. Yeah, I can show you real quick. If you just take a picture. So I know all the big words. So we don't really have anything that we don't. Except the river, if the river hits going. So yeah, this this is more to target. A lot of these are to target people in the uh, pass-through traffic. So there's a lot of pass-through traffic that is 18 to 29. This town, of course, does not have many people 18 to 29. So most of this is to market to outside individuals instead of inside individuals. Right. Because, yeah. Because we believe that we can we can get the inside people pretty easily in this town. So and each one we, of these are hitting a different age group. Uh, to a certain Facebook. extent, yeah. Facebook, I would say, has the largest reach. Um, Instagram still has a large reach, but it, um, it starts constricting, and Snapchat so, definitely has the smallest reach. So we can use each one of these at different age groups. Different age groups, so different So we could be on all of them and, and, and target all of them. But well, you. Thank you. Um, um, Sai, if we decide to go in this direction, we could come back at the next meeting and do some live demonstrations of each one. Yeah, of and just so here's this is the one uh, geofilter that Trinidad has currently. Is this bottom? Yeah. So you basically, if they were to take a picture of Trinidad, most people like to use the geofilters as identification mm -hmm. factors. And Where so they're at. That's currently our one city geofilter that we have. Huh? Yeah, I just took a picture of myself. <laughs> so that is the one. But that, that's an option for relatively cheap way to expand our Snapchat presence. Okay. Yeah. Um, as well as that, you can um, do Snapchat story ads, which would be um, in between um, individual people's stories. You can actually pay for an ad that represents Trinidad. And so that can be either be a picture or a video with the option to swipe up and transfer you to our web page. And so that would be, that's a little more expensive, but that's uh, an ability to target people passing through who are just looking at their friends' stories. And in between every two to three friends' stories, which are things that people upload for free, would be a paid advertisement, advertising Trinidad or an event that we had, or a video of our downtown. Any of those options are possible, and that would be 10 seconds. Okay, so we've got two young people in here, okay? Mm -hmm. What would attract you to if you're driving through, you too, Raven, what would attract you to stop here in Trinidad? With all these platforms or specifically with Snapchat? Snapchat. Snapchat. Uh, with Snapchat, the um, free and paid geofilters I think are some of the most effective because they are um, they're exciting and they are very expensive. I think we're going to have a little bit of trouble with the Snapchat story ads because of with the amount of exposure we want to get, they would I think take a significant chunk out of the overall year's marketing budget. Okay. So, the, but the question was, what would interest you? What would we say that would interest you to to, to come into town? So it's not as much what you would say. Is, is there enough? Is there enough? Is there enough that would interest that age group? Yeah. So I think if we had a good geo filter and they were driving through and they're Snapchatting and they saw the geo filter and they said. What's this funky, quirky geofilter? They've just driven through New Mexico, which probably doesn't have any geofilters for the last four hours. They're pretty bored. They're playing on their phone for the last five hours. That would be something that I could see attracting people, and I know has when I've traveled. Mm -hmm. Different filters, and like Andrew said, anything can be done with either Trinidadios, Arcade, just a simple old picture of the peak. So that's when the yeah. So that's when the paid geo filters would come would come in. So say that we have our Fourth of July festival, and we want. So we know that people are going to be coming to our Fourth of July festival, and we know that people are going to be taking pictures and sharing them on their Snapchat, which is a very easy way to. You can create paid filters for an event that advertises our city, so that when people are taking these pictures and putting them on their stories, they might have five hundred people that follow their stories from not only wherever they're from, but all around. Sure. I mean, your daughter probably has friends from Texas and Oklahoma and Dubai. Yeah, he's all around the world. And so they see that story. It's not as much of a direct transaction of you see that and you're instantly here. 
but it starts creating that mind space, which is very important in the online marketing sphere. So you start creating that idea of Trinidad, and they see cool things happen, and they see that's happening in Trinidad. And then maybe a month later, they see that again, it's a different activity, and they see it's happening in Trinidad. Now that makes those people, when they drive by Trinidad, go, hey, this is the place that my friend always has these cool Snapchat filters and is always doing these events in. Let's stop there and see what's going on. That is sort of the way that these paid filters would work is they're not as much of a, you see them and you're here instantly as much as you see them and now you have that idea of Trinidad and you're expanding that brand and that message. In the and so sponsored geo filters are all based on the amount of location you want to fill. So they can be anywhere from $5 to hundreds of dollars. Luckily, because we're in a small town, they're a lot cheaper than a place like Denver. In a place like Denver, to get a block by a block during a prime weekend could be $10,000. Like a place like Trinidad, to get a block by a block for a weekend could be $10. Because we don't have that competition that a place like Denver does. So it, it, is, it is a positive that we can get a lot cheaper rates because we're in a rural community versus an urban community. And the other thing is that I think the main thing will be capturing highway traffic. Is kids yeah. playing on their phone, youth playing on their phone, and seeing these geo filters and going, "What's this place? Nowhere else has this cool so geo filters." So the geo filters pop up, or yeah. So um, you so say I take a picture of myself or anything else. Uh -huh. You could they have normal filters that change it to black and white. Mm -hmm. They make you look a little more tan. All those type of things. <laughs> and then once you get past that, yeah. they have major sponsor filters, which are companies like. Coca-Cola or a movie, those people are paying between 250000 and a million dollars to have those spread all across the US. And then after that is your community filters. And those community filters are um, are, are just another set of those filters. So, some some of those filters there. are like fun filters. You sit there and you take a picture of yourself and it puts like a mask on you or something. And then you send it to your, to your friends. Yeah, I'm familiar with the Snapchat. Yeah. 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 So, so, I, I just want to encourage the board that we've got a pretty robust okay. presentation yeah. to get through. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and this, is, this yeah. is what you're giving us is you're giving us interest and that's exactly it. But at the end, we're kind of going to pull you for which way you want to take advertising dollars and then we'll come back. We can really drill down into some of this. Okay. And give some more specific. I can actually contact them and say, how much would it cost during 4th of July to have a paid geo filter for this much area? And they can give me the numbers for that. So until I sort of know what you want, it's very hard to get the numbers for any of this type of stuff. Um, email marketing campaigns. These are still one of the most effective ways to reach reoccurring customers and reach people who have come to this town. Uh, one advantage we do have is Colorado.com. We get new emails every single week. Um, and we could add those to our email marketing list. And so through that, we would have to purchase a service, whether it's MailChimp, ConvertChip, ActiveCampaign. They're all the same. Basically what they do is allow you to organize thousands of emails into um, an organized list, create um, email campaigns, and then send those email campaigns out to all those people. And um, with that, the positives are that it's a direct, um, it's a direct marketing to someone. And it also keeps whether it actually affects them to come back or not instantly, it keeps you um, in their thoughts. So you send out something, say, come, sell out, um, come celebrate 4th of July, and then you send something maybe three weeks later that says, the fishing is great right now, come hop in, look what this person, look what the trout they caught right under the commercial street bridge, all these type of things. And they're, um, they're creating the idea that Trinidad is always active in their mind. So anytime they're thinking of, I need to go somewhere, I need to get away, they, just got an email from Trinidad two days ago. Instead of having to go look online and say, where do I want to go? They're like, oh, well, Trinidad sent me an email. Let's go down there. So it's a way to actively engage people who have been here and have put interest in this community because you're not going to be able to gain people's emails unless they have given them to you, which means they're already interested in either learning more about the community or coming to the community. The, the harder part will be collecting emails. So besides the Colorado.com, we'll have to work either with other organizations to collect email lists that they have, or um, work with people like the Welcome Center to gather emails, or work with. Or, or I'd work love in our to home. see even like at the hotels if you're interested in getting more information about Trinidad, you know, right here or sign up here. And so that's one easy method that we could do, or you could have that be a part of you in the check-in. Say, mm -hmm. check this box if you'd like to receive information about the city of Trinidad, and you can work with anything from museums to. Um, 
hotels, any of those options to gain those email lists. But that's a really low cost way to reach people who have already peaked interest in Trinidad. But the thing is that you won't grab people who aren't interested in Trinidad. We have a MailChimp account right now with about 500 email addresses that came out of the space to create sort of, so that might be a starting point. So that would be a start, but we would want to expand that list, and then we would also want to get a little more specific with that list to actually put them into um, subcategories potentially mm -hmm. to know um, if we're marketing, if, these, if we have people who are the younger generation, we're probably not going to send the e same email out to them that we would put the baby boomers or the retirees who are looking to come to Trinidad. that. We can, we can actually designate those email plans to different people for different um, objectives because, as we know, people look for this town for very different reasons. Um, and then option or blogging is actually a very effective option, but it is very time consuming. So we have two options. We can create our own blog. That would be sort of a natural way. And we can hope that that gets shared and um, pushed around on the internet through, say we have a really effective blog post about maybe our fishing or something. And the fishing um, social media page picks that up and says, hey, this place is an unknown fishing spot. And they share it out to their hundreds of thousands of members that follow their page. That's a really natural way to gain exposure. But it also requires someone who's talented in blog and content creation because if it's not a good blog it's not going to get shared out because there is a lot of competition online especially in the blog world. The second one is to actually attract blog writers down here and so that is through reaching out to those writers explaining what this town has to offer and then usually providing them with stipends and lodging and so you'll actually host them down here you usually help help them through the process give them some ideas of things to do and then they actually write about their um, natural experience in this town. And that's that's effective because it's not coming from <coughs> us. It's coming from a third party person who is writing in their own words and is writing what they loved about the town, what they didn't love about the town, but it's all organic, it's all And natural. then that blogger could yeah. have at least 10,000 to more. And followers. then that blog can get picked up. Uh, recently, um, and Colorado uh, Tourism also likes to share that type of information. So recently we were learning about uh, when they talked about the Hot Springs Trail. They wrote a blog about the Hot Springs Trail, uh, or someone wrote a blog about the Hot Springs Trail after doing that, and that reached over 1.2 million, um, that had 1.2 million interactions on that blog. And so that was, they said it was about a thousand dollar cost total for that individual, and they had 1.2 million interactions, which is way cheaper than anything you can actually purchase. On the long term, this is where a lot of communities have seen success. Yes, and it's but it does require, as a lot of these other do, it requires someone to be actively creating and managing content, which is um, which is something that with all of these online and social media platforms, you do have to think about. It is a lot of these do have more active management than something like a billboard or a newspaper. They're they're day to day. You really want to create that audience, keep that audience excited, and keep that audience coming back. And then, so the last thing that I want to cover, this is actually a little less of, this will be not as much of a cost, but when I was looking through what people do when they travel, online travel ratings are very important, and the amount of information that most of our community businesses have on their travel websites are very much below par for most cities that you go to. So one example is on Yelp, I looked at 20 restaurants, and only one or only two had their um, menus actually uploaded. The other ones only had people that take pictures of their menus. So those are these are easy things that the board could decide to hire a consultant to go around to the community and help increase all of these different um, online travel sites or online rating sites so that our community had a stronger presence. Because if someone's driving by on the highway, what they do is they flip open their phone if they're hungry and they look at Yelp. If they go and they see that five restaurants are open and they can't find a menu for any of those restaurants, they're not going to stop because they don't want to pull off the highway to then walk into a restaurant to look at the menu and be like, I don't it's want to It's all done before they get off the highway. Exactly. It's very much a very active and um, fast-paced community. And also, if they're planning their travels, they're going to go online and look at all these sites. And unfortunately, most of our businesses don't have that much information, even accurate um, operating hours. Those are very important to people. Because if you pull someone off the highway and they come to your restaurant and you say you're going to be open until 9 and they come at 8 and you're closed, that leaves a really bad scent in someone's hungry belly. 
I mean, if you're really hungry and you're hoping to go to this restaurant, and now they're closed even though they say they're supposed to be open online, that can really deter someone from ever coming back to them. And do they comment on that, that it wasn't open? Yeah, there, yeah. there are, yeah. 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 I had a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> people, like, people also like to comment on things. So, right. It could be in a negative sense. Yes, it could be in a negative sense, and then that can actually have a snowball effect where then the ratings of the restaurants or shops are lower, which then make people worry about even looking into the restaurant. Because if you see a two and a half star rating, the average population will say, yeah, that's not good. That's fifty percent. <laughs> that's an F grade in my book. So, well, yeah. Andrew, wouldn't you say with all six that you, the six channels you've talked about, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, the email marketing, the blog, and the online, in this particular sector of marketing, if you don't do it well, it can actually have the opposite effect of what you're trying. Very, to do. very much, yes. So that once again goes to some thought with the board about being selective and making sure that if we go into this channel that what you select, we can support. Yes, and, and, and do it well. effort-based, too. Yeah. And, it, and it's also based on that business that those people are looking for. If it doesn't service them right, yeah. it's not gonna service the town right. And so there are, I looked it up as well, there are um, specialists or um, contractors that you can actually have and pay to come down here, and they will go, you can say, I'm paying you to reach 30 businesses, and with those businesses, you have to upload this, 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 and this, and make sure this, this, this is right. And they will actually go through and go through all 30 of those businesses. And so that would be also, in a way, a community outreach um, effort, because a lot of the businesses in the community just aren't technology as technology savvy as um, people in the bigger cities. So I think it would be a way to reach out to the community as well and support the community in a, in a more, um, in a, in a way that will help tourism in general, mm -hmm. but that would also help a lot of individual businesses and make them excited about the tourism tourism. Well, well, question with that. Let's say you have a good business and a bad business. As we as tourism, do we want to get the bad business advertised, or do we want to just promote the, the businesses that are doing things properly? Mm -hmm. What I would say is that in the aspect of menus, pictures, hours of operation, that can, that I don't think we should just, that would be um, an idea of discriminating against any good or bad business because that is general information. That makes our town look bad if someone's putting out bad information. Whether it's a good business or bad business, I would say that would be left more up to people who are rating that business and that will sort of as like a Yelp would work, if people are rating your business lower, you're going to be lower on the metric. Because so someone could be say, I have, I have great food, but they're, they were, they're never open. That's two different things, ratings right there. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, they might have good food, but they're never open, or they're never open, you know. We just and need the food to be extremely valid, neutral. You know? So yeah. it depends on what they and write. The, the way you neutralize yourself is you hire a consultant that understands that and works with staff to do that. Yeah. And, and you. the consultant can't work on improving their rating or improving those. Not, you can work on improving the information that they are giving out to people that are looking into our community. Right. And I think a lot of people that are in business already understand that, mm -hmm. that they are being rated, you know, so they know what the effect is going to be on the community and themselves. And that even goes into things like TripAdvisor as well. I looked at TripAdvisor and we have a lot of attractions that we still don't have up on TripAdvisor. So working with a consultant as well to go to those attractions and get them up on TripAdvisor so that we, when you look at our town, there's a hundred things to do instead of 50 things to do. That just is more options, which means more people have the chance to be interested in that. Being that you put this together, what do you feel? As in, um, as in all of these sites. I mean, I think that we really need to step up our Yelp presence. I, I think it's really difficult for someone to decide where they're gonna eat if they have to not only try to find a menu or look at a picture of a menu that someone took, because that's very hard to read, to be honest, because you're looking at it, it's usually angled a certain direction, maybe has a glare on it. I think that's one of the most important things we could do when we're trying to attract people off the highway because the number one way we are going to attract people off the highway is with food. And then, we could all say what we like, but yeah. I, would not, I would like to have your input as because to go in the right direction. Yeah, so at the end of the presentation, I'll give my two cents on what I think would be the most effective way for this, for 
the city to go with with um, the sixty to an eighty thousand dollar budget, and then uh, talk to you guys about your recommendations. So the next thing I looked into was radio marketing. So um, I looked into the local radio, um, regional radio, and then online radio. And so for the local radio, we really only have two major radio stations. Yeah. <laughs> and so, advertising wise, they are very relatively cheap compared to um, going with the regional radio or an online radio. Um, and they're very effective to activate the community and to potentially grab people who are driving by who are listening to the radio. Unfortunately, radio is less common than it used to be when it comes to travel. People Sorry. now have phones and they have music that they can easily connect to their phone. So there is some shortfalls when it is to capturing people off the highway because there are different ways that people travel and listen to, and listen to music now. But for local, it's a great way to capture local people and a cheap way to activate um, the community to come to these events, which will then help promote those events because people matter when it comes to events and people matter when it comes to activities. Because if you see 10 people there versus 50 people there, that can completely change the view of outsiders who are coming to these events and also when it comes to social media marketing. You have a picture with 100 people versus 10 people, definitely shows a different, it makes you feel different about that event. It makes you excited versus not excited about that event. <clears throat> when it comes to regional radio, I picked out a couple or two real regions that I thought would be um, applicable. And so their rates are approximately double to three times what our local rates are, which is expected because they have a lot larger reach and a lot bigger community. And I picked out music um, that I thought would be the general, or radio stations that I thought would have a general encompass to the type of people who listen to radio and the type of people that would want to come to Trinidad. So I picked out classic rock, um, variety music, which covers blues, rock, and country, and then two different country stations in um, those channels. And with those, I thought that would be a great way to target for individual events. So I don't think that would be something that we would do all year round, but say three weeks before a 4th of July event. We could reach out to those markets and say, come to this place where you can enjoy the beautiful riverfront, 10 degrees cooler and great fireworks. Things that are gonna get these people who are sitting in Amarillo, dying from their air conditioner going out, just being like, I gotta get out of this town, it's so hot. They're a five hour drive up here. And I think those are, what we do is we do quick marketing campaigns with those type of radio stations to get the message out in those communities to get out of your community and come to somewhere in a beautiful, nice, great climate, all those type of aspects. So that's my opinion on how we could use regional radio to attract people for special events into the town. And then um, we talk about both Pandora and Spotify radio. The more I got into it, the more I am getting a little more concerned about the cost. Um, they are very expensive to do campaigns because their campaigns usually last between three and five months. And they do reach an extraordinary amount of people, but they aren't as targeted personally as I think I would like them to be targeted. So you can target by location, but it's the location that you enter when you sign up for that um, application. So it is not geolocation, it's just normal location. So if you entered that you, if you signed up for it in Albuquerque, we could target Albuquerque, but we, and they, that means that it would target anyone who signed up from Albuquerque. So that actually means it could target someone who's living in Washington, DC, New York, California, because it's where you signed up for the app instead of where you actually so um, where you're located where you're geolocated because they don't actually capture geolocation information through Pandora and Spotify. The positives about it are that um, with an ad campaign between five and ten thousand dollars a month, I actually reached out to Pandora and had their specialists um, come up with two general campaigns for the um, Albuquerque and um, Amarillo areas, Albuquerque, Amarillo, and Pueblo area, and through that. Um, they were able to, two different campaigns between five and $10,000 a month coming out to be around forty wow. to $60,000 um, for a campaign. Wow. Very expensive, yes. Um, so this is why I am a little less recommending these unless we talk about one of our later steps, which is partnerships. But what I would, um, that has a reach of between um, 100 and 300,000 people. And those different ads are video ads, um, voice ads, so in between a couple songs, a 30 second voice spot will come up and they'll say, and they actually create the ads for you, so that is a benefit that we don't have to spend money to create the ads, but that would pop up a 30 second ad talking about Trinidad or talking about um, this area. So 
a little more expensive. I think that's something maybe we would look at in the future or with partnerships, but it is something to keep in mind because it does have a broader reach and it also is um, the, sort of the new way of music listening is the streaming. I know we got a lot going on. So when you say partnerships though, do you mean like uh, some other tourism dollars from the state? Uh, yeah, more multi-community partnerships is what I was mainly thinking of. I think that, um, I'll talk about this later in the presentation, but I talk about communities I think we could partner with and um, get matching dollars to advertise our region because with some of these um, more expensive campaigns, I think that we could do well by partnering with four other towns for a total of $50,000, which would reduce the burden on every one of the town, but let us get into a new, um, a new region of um, engagement that none of these towns have ever been in before. And then with Spotify, this number's gonna shock you, a minimum campaign is $25,000. Um, and then so their cost per measurement is five to thirty dollars so that's basically um, cost per person that actually engages into that ad so that means that you hear the ad on the radio and you actually click on it and it transfers you to the website to a social media page whichever you choose but it actually transfers you to that direct source of information so andrew in this sector in it, it differs a little bit than the online sector because with online you could really see where the metrics were easy to quantify online they have about 100x amount of information per person right. than, on, than radio does. So with radio, um, and, and it particularly when you get outside of local and, and maybe even regional and you get into um, the Spotify and the, um, the Pandora, do they have quantifying numbers for where what your reach would be? And would you feel comfortable that, that it's not just we reach this many people, but they could specifically say, during the times that your ad played, this many people were reached? Yes, they can okay. give you all that accurate information about how often your ad is played, um, how, how many people it's reached when the ad is played, all those, inf all those type of information. They can, that's the good thing about anything online, is they can give you all the metrics that you want post, especially. So you can know that after this campaign, on this day we reached this many people, on this day we reached this many people, all those type of information, but they are a lot more expensive and in my opinion, they're not as effective as a lot of that social media marketing because they are um, broader scale. But the cool thing about these music marketing with the idea that we are have music events are becoming um, more of a music town, we can actually target towards genre of music. So if we decided that we really, we decided that Blues Fest was gonna be a huge event this year, we wanted to crank it up from 10 to 20,000 people. We could create a marketing campaign on blues music. Which is very cool, because I, I really think that we have so many wonderful festivals, I really do. I think Blues Fest could be nationally recognized. And so that would be, that, that would be what I like about Spotify and Pandora, is we could say, for we, all these blues station and these 12 blues artists, when you're listening to a station that is blues oriented or the artists that are at our blues fest, our ad's gonna come up and says, come to Trinidad to listen to blah blah blah, and that's who they're listening to currently. So it's it's it act it activates them. Yeah, it's sneaky because it activates them because they go, I'm listening to this music, and this small, quaint, cool town has a music festival that's got this guy for a really cheap price. Then we can start potentially pulling people from all around the country. But that 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 I think is something to look at. But I don't know if that's what we're ready for we're currently right now. Tools. Yeah, I'm gonna say. I'm you know, I'm yeah. Yeah. So I really want to get that ten thousand ten thousand figures. Where are they gonna sleep? Where are they gonna sleep? We gotta get a pasture. Now you're ahead. And I'm working on it, but I really want to plan for that for us to even nationally really focus on that and find places that they can camp and everything. I think that yeah. we have so many wonderful festivals, but of all of them that could really put Trinidad nationally on the map, it's. And so that's why I think these are something I wanted to educate you about, but I don't know if I want to recommend them for like a next year campaign. But I think as a growth, these are things that can be really beneficial to specific events, which then can grow the overall advertising. First things first. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay, now we go into local advertising. Uh, we have the Chronicle, which is our local newspaper, billboards, and then town poster event calendars. So these are all um, relatively inexpensive ways to target people in the community. Um, with the Chronicle, in my personal opinion, their rates are very expensive. Um, it, it is a newspaper, so they do have only so much space they can give out. So I think it's a way to target the community, but I also think the radio is a more effective way to target the community than the Chronicle because of the cost of ads. As you can see, a half-page ad 
that runs for four weeks is six hundred and sixty nine dollars. Mm -hmm. To be honest, between Facebook and radio, we could probably reach the amount, same amount of people for about half that price. And the other thing I don't particularly like about newspaper is there's no real ability to have any metrics for you. They deliver the newspapers, they go out, but you can't really have any metrics saying, how effective was this newspaper at? It just goes out and people come or they don't come, but we don't have any way to measure effectiveness. Well, we're not trying to advertise to local people. We're trying yeah. to advertise to and so that's, I just wanted to put this up there because this is just another way that we can advertise locally, which captures people who are... Now, if I was going to use the Chronicle, I'd want to see a Chronicle newspaper in every hotel room in town. That way the travelers would be able to look and see that there's something to do in town. But otherwise, to just advertise to our local people doesn't... And I think they, they also have a... They do mail out a lot of copies that people that used to live here. And, and, no, you go on, and you can go online and read the paper. Because I have family that doesn't live here and they go online and read the, the paper. And so that's why I put on there because I think there's a couple different options that they have, um, both online and um, locally, that are, for certain things, could be an effective way to market. Um, we go with billboards. Billboards are still pretty effective. They aren't nearly as effective as they used to be because now we all have cell phones, so we don't nearly look up as much, especially anyone but the driver. But they do say 71% of commuters look at roadside billboards. Um, and then they say 54 people that actually get interested by those billboards talk about them. But the hardest part about billboards is the engagement. So you have to create a campaign, billboards, usually one to five that actively engage people to um, intrigue their interest. So you have to do something that actually makes them go, that billboard made me think enough to get on my phone and look that up. So that's that's the way that billboards sort of work now is use billboards as, as a way to transfer someone online to grab more information. So you really want to have very limited information, but some way to actively grab someone's attention and pull them in. And so the other problem about billboards is it's very competitive. They're, they don't get to produce that many more billboards because it's um, there's highway regulations, there is private land regulations, and a lot of the good billboards have long outstanding contracts that get renewed every year and you have no chance to buy them out. So that is a concern with billboards, but it is something that we could look into. But it also is something where we would have to hire someone to create a billboard campaign because we don't have anyone um, inside the city that has any type of qualification to create an engaging billboard campaign like that. So that would be another added cost to the billboards would be hiring someone. And then poster event calendars. This is something that I actually thought about when it was engaging um, hotel guests, people who are coming to the town, people who are walking around the downtown. So if we decided to work with a contractor to have um, content creation and um, local posters put out that would have calendars of events, um, event posters going out, but then also things that are going on the weekends, little maybe quarter page um, wrap cards that could go into hotel rooms during every other week of the summer that inform people very casually what's going on, what are the five best activities going on this weekend, and what are the five best activities going on next weekend. That would be a way not only to support our local or regional printer shops because that's who we order them from, but also to engage people who are here to spend more money. So that would be the method is that we're not actually bringing people off the highway by any means, but we're engaging people that are here to leave their hotel room or uh, leave their camping ground, leave wherever they're out and go explore the town. Or people who are downtown to see a poster, read it and say, I don't really want to drive anymore, let's spend the night here instead. Because they decide that if I drive two more hours, we're going to go there, it's going to be late, and then I'm not going to do anything. If I stay here, maybe there's some fun things I saw on this poster that I can do. So I think that's an effective way to capture people that are already here and keep them here for a longer period of time. And it is a low-cost way, but it does require content creation. Did you see the poster in the elevator? I love seeing that poster. <laughs> I have my poster somewhere else. I, and Jerry did it. That my husband did it. Yeah, that's He's awesome. How did he keep it up? Huh? How did he keep it up? Did he use tape? I have no idea. Because that's a big thing. I think it was a piece of tape. It's probably a thick double-sided tape. Double-sided yeah. He is printing them up himself. Yeah. He's got the machine. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Pretty pretty wonderful. Wonderful. So that's, so those, I think it's an effective way to 
um, keep people here longer and get people out of their hotel rooms to spend money in the downtown. But I don't think it's an effective way to get anyone off the highway or to get anyone from other communities into our community. Unless we decided to go into other communities and put our posters in those communities, which I would not recommend. <laughs> And then the next thing we can look towards is um, earned content. And so earned content can go anywhere from social media to blogs to Facebook to writers. And so earned content is actually working with um, social media influencers, writers, newspaper people to come down here and to come to our town and write articles either about events or overall atmosphere of the town, whether it's we get a Wild West writer to come and write about the Wild West. We get an artist writer to come about the art scene. But what these require is us to create a media kit that we can actually send out to and actively engage these different um, groups of people that create these content and share these content. So that will actually take some time and effort to create an engaging, um, exciting media kit that tells someone when they, they basically would send an introduction email with the media kit. And through that media kit, they would look through it and go, this seems like something I could write a fun article about that it can get me, because what, what they're going to look at is what's going to get me more recognition. So is this a marketing group or individuals that would be writing? Both. Uh, so, we, so we could send it everywhere from the Denver Post to <coughs> the Fisher's Daily Magazine to the Wild West Cowboys Magazine, whatever we wanted to. There's one magazine that I get a subscription to, it's 5280. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they go all over the state, and I've read some very interesting articles from different towns. Yep. But that's a magazine that I think is, has a lot of impact. And so that that's a great example. Actually, 5280 is a Denver based magazine, but they talk about all things in Colorado. and. You, what we would need to do though is you couldn't just send him an email and be like, hey, we'd love to have you down in Trinidad, it's a really great place. He gets those emails all the time. We need to create media kits that are enticing enough to get them, yep, yep. Get them here. Because then they'll write the articles, but you have to get them here. And then the other thing is you can actually work towards getting social media influencers down here. Because we do have beautiful scenery and we have small point architecture, things like that, there are people in the social media world that, that want to go out and find places where they can take pictures of things that they can't take in other places. And we do have that availability that a lot of other towns don't have. We have um, beautiful mountainsides, historic downtown. So if we can look towards targeting some of those influencers, those people can have upwards of hundreds of thousands of followers. And then that is, the up top will say, Trinidad, Colorado will be this picture of this really cool architecture. And then all these architecture buffs might go, Where's Trinidad, Colorado? They click on it and it opens up a map to actually show people where Trinidad, Colorado is. So those are all ways to actively engage people in a more natural method than paying for advertising. But it does take time to actually create a media kit. And media kits, you have to make your media kit very compelling because this, they, they have so many options to go to in Colorado. As you guys know, there's so many beautiful towns to go to that we really have to sell ourselves and make multiple media kits specified towards the type of people that we are targeting. And then the last thing um, I want to sort of go over, because we do have a relatively smaller marketing budget than a lot of other larger communities, we're not going to be able to reach those bigger markets. The Denver market is untouchable for most of them, most of our budget-wise. I looked into doing um, a Spotify campaign in Denver, and they said that's going to be between $100,000 and $150,000. So things like that, as we realize, Denver is a huge, huge market in this country now. And it's very, very competitive because it's so popular and there's so much money going into Denver. But through partnerships, we might be able to leverage a little bit more money and do a regional approach to marketing to hit some of those larger markets or spend our money a little more wisely when it comes to some of these online platforms. And so um, I, through people like Walsenburg and Barfield County, which we do have connections with in their um, economic development and tourism industry because we worked with them and we've partnered with them. They, we both have a craft agency, so we do have pretty close connections. Um, Las Vegas, um, Raton, and other um, regions along New Mexico actually just, yes, two days ago met with a man from, he sits, um, he works with the Las Vegas, New Mexico um, tourism board, and then he sits on, I would have to look at the name, it's like Bonito or something. Um, it's just a town right 15 minutes north of Albuquerque. He sits on their tourism board. And he came up here to talk about partnerships and how us along the I-25, along the Santa Fe Trail, can work together um, 
to really promote us. So those, I think it's very possible to work with other tourism boards to collaborate on promotional ideas, and then we can decrease our cost by a lot. And then finally, working with Pueblo. I think Pueblo actually does feel more of a connection to us than anyone uh, than anywhere near Colorado Springs. Um, we, we have had the city council down here to meet with us. We have had people from the historical preservation board. I don't think it would be that hard to get in touch with their tourism board and work with them. And their budget is a lot larger than ours, so we could actually, for once, be the little brother when it comes to that sort of funding operation where they could actually probably host a majority of the burden and we could hop on and talk about either our historic history, coal mining, all those type of things. And that's possibly where we could get Walsh, Bird, the Vita, Kachara to jump on. Exactly, and then do a corridor, yeah, and do a corridor type of advertisement, and we could maybe leverage $100,000 where Trinidad only had to pay fifteen or $20,000 in that marketing campaign, which would, and our reach would be a lot farther then. And to be honest, I think we probably have the most compelling tourist economy of any of those towns, so we would, potentially gain the most out of group marketing because they'll still have to look up our town. And I think our town has some of the more compelling aspects to attract you here. One of the things that when we were doing those uh, sessions, um, I seen the map where a lot of people are leaving Denver mm -hmm. to get out of there to come to smaller communities and stuff. <coughs> so, you know, I know it's a tough market, but there should be something in there about us yes that they would want to come you know i i know that it's a tough market and it's a three hour drive and if, mm -hmm. if you relate that to an actual drive it takes three hours to get to breckenridge from denver on any weekend right. if you're leaving on friday or saturday morning it takes you three hours at least to get back leaving on sunday afternoon so if we partnered with a couple different communities we might be able to get the same access that a town like breckenridge or vale has in the denver region partnering our dollars together. And of course, we'd be splitting those people coming down here, but I think Trinidad has the strongest appeal of those communities, so we might get a majority of those shares. And so that is the end of my um, presentation. I'll go through a couple of my recommendations. I think what we could start on is really um, creating um, an Instagram page and really working on having constant posts on our Facebook and Instagram page to gain a natural following. While paying money during hot periods, special events, weekends, to boost our posts regionally and geolocationally to people that are traveling along the highway within, I would say, a mile north and a mile south. So get people, anyone from the border of Pueblo all the way to, I guess, Las well, Vegas? maybe at Las Vegas, I don't know if we'd be able to reach that far, but close to that area with, with our actually targeted posts. So we wouldn't actually be boosting posts every single day, but maybe every other weekend during the summer we would boost some posts and with we events. would yeah with events or with um or even just if we place. have a great post if mm -hmm. someone catches a picture in the river and shares it with us we could boost that post and we can actually boost that post to just fishermen people who like fishing and talk about fishing in these certain areas so we could really target our boost posts depending on um who we want to target and i think that would be a way that we've already started doing but that we could really expand and be way more active and have it more be our constant contact the way that we are always in someone's brain is through facebook and instagram if we catch them once and they follow us now we always have them they're always going to see our pictures when we post them and then we're not paying to contact them anymore so it'd be a way to naturally gain people so you're recommending facebook too right yes facebook and instagram because they use the same uh, metrics and they have the best metrics out there Here's the thing that I'm kind of stuck with is we're paying for this supervisor in the welcome center. Mm -hmm. But we don't have all this information as to where we're going to go. My thing is to create someone who's going to take care of all this stuff rather than supporting the welcome center. So, Mr. Kress, I think what we're looking for from you is what channels you want to advertise through. And then staff will put that together and we'll come back and say, here's how we accomplish that. Mm -hmm. But is there going to be someone always working on that? Is it just going to be staff? So that would go, so we'll come back once again, if you choose back. that channel, we'll come back and say, here's what we recommend. Mm -hmm. You can say, I like that recommendation or I'd appreciate it this way. But I think really what we're trying to get for, from what Andrew presented today is I understand that. Is yeah. those well, channels. I totally, but I, I'm looking at the big picture. And we're going to come to you with a solution for what you want to be able to do. Because, yes, these 
what I'm talking about is going to require active content management, active content creation, which will have to have, if not, uh, at least, I would say, 15 hours a week of effort. So what we're talking about is either an outside source or a or City funding an inside source, yes. And once again, today, we just want to get your direction, and then we'll come back and say, here's three options to get that to where you want to go. And so, yeah, so once once I get this more information, I actually go and see, to have someone who will manage and do this many posts and this many engagements and blah, 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 or try to meet this many engagements a week, this is how much we'd have to pay someone for this many hours a week to do this many posts with this many engagements, blah, 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 blah. I, I totally understand that. Yeah. I, I understand all that. My my confusion is is that I would like to have all these other things all settled before, you know, we... This is all for 2019, so they will be. They'll have to be. But, uh, but just to plant a seed, and I'll go over this in my director's report, the outcome of that conversation about the lodging tax is going to depend on you saying, here's how we would use the money if we had access to it. So I think the we're trying to set that conversation up by having you choose any, some, all of these specific things, and then we'll come back to you. Do you have, what other recommendations? So my other recommendation um, with Snapchat, I would um, really recommend that we improve our free geo filters. It's not much cost, I would say. At most, it's $1,000 to put two or three new geo filters up there. And with that, they stay there forever because we don't have to pay hosting fees because we are a municipality and Snapchat does give free hosting fees to municipalities. So it would be a very, it would be a very quick and cheap way to have something that's out there and that will never go away. The next thing I would say that um, we would work towards is that um, email marketing. So I think that that's also requires content management, but I think it's a, a really effective way to have people who have already piqued interest or have already been here to keep on getting information because return customers are great for business because they usually actually spend more than uh, first time customers and they also gain attachment to the community as you guys know and then come back and bring other people back and then they do one of the best things in the world which is called uh, word of mouth marketing and word of mouth marketing is one of the most effective ways to market because people trust their friends people don't really trust other sources as much um, besides that um, I would love to look into blog content creation I would have to um, come down to a little more details to what it would actually cost us to create the media kit because I think it's less important than doing some of the social media and doing some of the um, some of the other methods so I would really want to find out exactly how much we want to spend on social media and then look into what it would cost to attract bloggers down here and um, attract um, content creators down here like we talked about with the um, Denver magazines and things like that. So I think that would all depend on how much focus we want to put and how much, as we talked about, daily and weekly activization we want on our Facebook and Instagram page. Because the more active we want to be on our Facebook and Instagram page and the more we want to boost posts, the less money we're going to have for um, other other outlets because those are the, I would believe that that's going to be sort of our way to actively engage people constantly and so whether that is you guys want two posts a week or you want a post every day is really going to change the cost besides that I think that regional radio could be a very effective method to target for special events um, in the upcoming weeks beforehand because we can target towards um, we can target towards region that we already know we have people coming and that have large population densities. So both Albuquerque and Amarillo have very large population densities, but are also a very quick travel to here. And then we could target for things like Fourth of July for shop local campaigns, for things like that, where we could um, reach out to those communities quickly, but not spend too much money like the online uh, radio stations. Besides that, I think uh, working towards poster event calendar and slash um, just miniature content creation would be a good idea. That would also require, uh, as we talked about, outside person to create content because you need design standards, design qualifications, but that would be a great way to activate people and a very efficient way to activate people because we already know that we have, high, we have low vacancy rates. We have a lot of people staying in our hotels. So the more we can get those people downtown, 
who can increase their spending from $7 from ordering a pizza to $30 for going out for two beers and food and then tipping a local person, that significantly increases our overall um, town revenue. And besides that, I, I think partnerships and um, working on partnerships over the next year for 2020 would be a great idea because I don't think uh, for 2019, or at least for um, the winter and spring of 2019 would be possible, potentially for the summer of 2019, but starting to make these connections from tourism board member to tourism board member could be a great way to capitalize our money and reach markets that we haven't reached before like Denver. So, Cy, do you wanna just have them have the poll your board kind of on what their favorite channels were for 2019? What are your favorite channels currently for 2019? <laughs> well, I would go Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I don't know about Snapchat, Snapchat quite yet, but I'm not that generation. Yeah, generation. no, I mean that, that is, and I've got a daughter that's that. That, that is 18 to 29. I think yeah. about 74 percent of their users are 18 to 29. Yeah. So, yeah. what's the the market that you like? I, I see a lot of that age group traveling through here. Yeah, that, I know yeah. how important they live off of that. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, that's that's why I put it on there because it is yeah. it's one of those social medias that has a very aggressive niche with young people where it is it is potentially the top app of eighteen to twenty nine year olds in this country. And that's it just that I'm just so amazed that my sister on her Instagram page, sorry Tom, she is like she's got a million ninety two million hundred followers because of this food cooking yep. scenario. So, so so back to that poll, if, if we yeah. could just go down, you mentioned Facebook and yes. Instagram. Facebook Instagram. And Instagram. Was there anything else, Camilla, that particularly attracted you? I think not talking right. about a whole marketing plan. It's a plan. whole marketing plan, yes. Okay. And, you know, um, I like that that blog. I do like the blog. I, I like how you presented everything in a way like the regional for special events. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, and the poultry events is totally right up our alley because we, we can do that, know. you know, and I, I think Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, I think, okay. all, and even the emailing. I mean, every yeah, one of those, every yeah, one of those that you brought up is targeting someone. And it targets a it, and it targets a different group too, which right. is why I and like that so and, much. And that's what I like about it is we want to target everybody. We want everybody to to see what we have to offer. Yes. You know, and and uh, I don't know since I've come on this board, I, I come downtown and I see more people walking around Trinidad now than I have in the last three to four years, and it's not locals. Yeah, you know, and. and you go to the restaurants, they're all full. So what, Tom, what Tom you I, have, I have you for Snapchat, maybe the email, the regional radio, and also the posters and event calendars. And uh, oh. working on partnerships. The part partnerships. Posters yeah. too, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that's, that's my main reason for the posters is because I have seen more foot traffic, mm -hmm. especially as the summer has gone on, I've seen a lot of foot and, traffic, and, the and, the and that's an easy way to, and the that's an easy way to capture some foot Thank traffic you. and make them spend more money. Okay. Or make those yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I'm the same as them. I, I do like. I, I I think the Snapchat for the cost. If it's only a thousand dollars, so size like the Snapchat. Yeah, my the low cost. Yeah, my the low cost. yeah my, and my college else? girl is <laughs> Snapchat and and, um, and Facebook. Facebook, Instagram, Instagram. And and I look because I I because with my location I see a lot of people um, stop and look at that little thing and I try I to keep it up uh, yeah. updated. My, I got two posters I, I got to put in there right now what's happening for that and I do see a lot of people stopping there for posters. I, I think we should. Uh, I, I agree with every single one of Andrew's recommendations. Mm -hmm. okay. Every single one that he gave us, it gets a different person, and I believe. So you've got uh, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Yeah, reason, the, it's just as long as I don't have to have a poster in my window. <laughs> but, you know, somewhere else put the posters because 
regional ID. But yeah, everything you did, you I did a great job poster. of it. Uh, you can't believe how many people stop and look at that big poster in my window. Oh, it's amazing. It's an attractive it's 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 poster. Right. Yeah, posters, However, regional radio. Yeah. Instagram, um, Facebook, Snapchat, email. email Instagram, Facebook, chat, Snapchat. Partnerships. Partnerships. Now that's a long, yeah. That's the long term. That's all of his. Okay, I have two questions back to you guys. Um, when we went through the craft, which is where this came out of, this is mm -hmm. kind of one of those final deliverables. We talked about two different types of campaigns, those that market people outside to come in and then those that market toward people inside to participate more. I think you've hit on your outside. Do you agree with these channels as well for inside to get people to participate? I think with the good thing about Facebook and Instagram is that it's not going to be hard to get people to follow and like our pages in this no. community because they are very social media active. Mm -hmm. And then we don't actually have to pay to reach those people. Right? So one of Andrew's recommendations for local was um, that you we use regional radio to target events, but we use local radio to target getting people out to the events that are from town versus using newsprint to do that. Do right. you agree with that as well? Well, the cost is... So much better on radio than it is newspaper. Or do you think that the social media you've selected gets local folks out? It's going to get certain local folks out. The rest of them are still listening to the radio. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think so if, yeah, if you, you go, if you go past the 45 radio, to yes. 60 oh, yeah. age range. So if you want to add some local radio and some local newspaper for mm -hmm. getting folks to events. Oh yeah, that are people still be the yeah. Uncle. yeah. Okay. Are the young people. If, if, if anyone's not agreeing with that, that was no. I agree. I, I mean, we don't know what the balance is going to be for sure. Yeah. Or some we don't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll definitely make. I mean, I'll, I'll make the balance relative to when we're talking about local radio and local newspapers. No, it's going to be local very newspaper. targeted towards. And it's always sad when somebody's got something to do on a weekend and they decide to drive to Pueblo when we have so much around here. So they need to be educated on what. Now, the, once again, my second question is the two things that you didn't give feedback on were things that have been important to you in the past, so I want to bring them up. Billboards? I'm no, I, I do believe there needs to be a billboard campaign from for. the South with, with a, exactly south. what Andrew said. You need to have you know, only, so only 86 my, miles to Trinidad. So my North. major concern about that is when I looked at billboards um, on I-25 in New Mexico, we were ranging between 1,000 and 1,500 per month. If we did a billboard really? campaign, wow. we are. Even I, I'm going to be talking to you later about a billboard renewal that we have up that's mm -hmm. price just got raised. Um, that just what got, is it? What is it? They were all uh, $659 a month. And so once again, we're, we're just getting... Yeah. Yeah, uh, right outside of town. So, or, so we'll hit that when we get to we'll our bill. I'm not for billboards. Okay, I, this I is too many. When we bring I see the too, many many bill, too many empty billboards. I think one thing about the billboards would be special events. Mm -hmm. Well, the one thing I would hate is a billboard that sits right out of town that we don't get that says Pueblo only one hour ahead. <clears throat> Yeah. So that could be something, if, if that's more of the way you're looking at, if, so there's so two different ways. Here, if we want one billboard that's large that says, get off the highway here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's a different cost than if we want six billboards from right. Albuquerque to the New Mexico border right. that all have right. a theme and push towards a message. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're going to include some billboards in the proposal back. In, yeah, in one of my proposals, I'll include a billboard campaign. Okay. Well, okay. usually billboards in Colorado are two to three times the cost of the billboards in New Mexico. Yeah. And then the last thing is, none of you recommended the online travel rating. Did you want that to be included? Oh, you mean like, like trip advisor and like like yeah. hiring a consultant to help improve our not business. at this point. Not at that's, 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 okay. that's a big undertaking. I think each okay. individual store needs to get All started. right, then let me consolidate this back to you and see if we agree. We're heavily towards Facebook and Instagram. We want to explore Snapchat, particularly correcting that filter. We want to look at starting to develop an email marketing campaign, and we want to look at what a blog would cost, and right. whether we decide to do that immediately or not. Local radio and local newspaper to advertise, uh, to get folks out and involved in what's going on. Regional radio for special events. Billboards to be included in at least one of the proposals Andrew brings back. Um, 
definitely posters locally and event calendars and then start talking about what it would be to build the partnerships toward the really large stuff that we might do down the road. Right. Does that encompass everything? So the things we're gonna leave out for now would be the consultant for the online, travel rating, the Pandora, the Spotify, and uh, the earned content uh, direction right now. Okay, okay. Everybody's in agreement? This was ex excellent, Andrew. That was really Thank you. Well done. No problem. Good job, man. Okay, so the next thing that staff brings back is Andrew will be back with a couple of plans that have prices attached to these, and then you can start um, adding and removing things based on what you want to do. And then to a uh, board member, to Mr. Press's point, we have to solve the issue of the taxing so that we know what we've got available to spend. Yeah, okay, and, and I was just, I hate to say this on, on a section, but do we, do we have anything on the trolley, on the stenciling yeah, on the trolley? There we go. Next time we'll have the... the I can give a basic update. This, okay. um, we will probably, within the next week, have the um, um, the images that are actually related on the bus, and we're hoping to actually have, um, if we're, depending on how, if, if we approve um, when, it, when it comes out, Next week, the actual design of the the vinyl on the bus, uh -huh. we potentially can actually have it up to Pueblo and back before the Blues Festival. Okay, awesome. But it takes about a week for the vinyl installation, and so um, it's, they they found a, a company in Pueblo that has um, a very affordable rates and also has very high um, standards of quality, and so is is it a good idea to take it out of service now? So that as opposed to in the fall. So I, I guess I'll ask you guys that. Do you, do you believe? That's um, an excellent point. So it's, it, it will be a week out. So that would be, we have a week with no trolley service, but then we would have branding on the trolley potentially. But I, I can't guarantee that. If, okay. I, if it's not going to be able to be done before um, the, yeah, cause you know, you the Blues Festival, I told him that we don't want to do it until after the hard Because you can get it there and then something can happen and then we're out two weeks. That's very true. You know, uh, I'm, I'm a yeah, whole week to do a stencil in the lab too, but I guess it has to dry them stuff. Yeah, and they have to, they have to, they have to put it into their garage, prepare the bus, and then actually Okay, well, keep us on. informed. Yeah, I'll keep you informed, but I would, I'll, I'll, a more safe guess is that it's going to happen after both of, both of our festivals, probably later on in September or early October. Okay. And, and since we're on it, the video that's in it, we were going to redo it, or we were going to be able to see what's on it, I haven't... I was going to take a ride on it to see what was We're happy to send you the link to that. It's the PBS special on Trinidad. Okay, it's a slow, it's a slow it's okay. okay, KCRT right. proposal. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Andrew. Yeah, we've never no discussed this at all. We need one of them. Yeah. We have one of our members that have it. Uh, I have to yeah. carry it by 11. Yeah. So I, will, I will be efficient because it was okay. a, a larger presentation. Yeah. Good morning, Madam Chairman. Uh, members of the board and everyone, uh, the uh, got an opportunity to uh, present last time, and I am thankful that uh, Raven and Tara uh, had the time to meet with me. What I did was I gave multiple proposals, and we went with some of the recommendations. And this month was light; there's no April, and they found the one that they thought was best. Uh, for the board, and this is, uh, I don't know if you have the one in front of you that was emailed, or I thought I brought So I brought one just in case. Hopefully they didn't write on that. There was so much information I was, I was writing on, so may I? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, and good morning. And the, uh, hopefully, hopefully I think that uh, radio is the value that I think it is. And for less than $5,000, you get a year of advertising versus like Andrew was saying, you know, and I, I go to, you know, for the last 25 years, I went to multiple government and other agencies and, and you, you can, for one time, you can, this is a fraction of what you pay for other opportunities. And so, and uh, that's what this is, is it, uh, it does, it, it breaks down, you're getting, Radio ads in each month. We went with the recommendations. We 
up some months we've made the other months uh, more uh, of an opportunity and then of course we added the April and this is the recommendation that these uh, two ladies uh, went with that they wanted to present to you. The other thing that I wanted to kind of mention is I think I need to emphasize the way that KCRT has kind of evolved. You know, at, at first, years ago, we were a uh, just a traditional radio station that would had you know a blues hour, and it uh, turned you know and Neil Sexton uh, came up with a very nice show, and we then we went to a radio station that went on the internet. We have three radio stations that go on the internet, all three of our websites, and your cell phone. So because the Blues Fest has done such a nice job, we now get people on worldwide that listen to our blue show that has evolved because of the, the Blues Fest has done such a great job in conjunction. Yeah, we get tons of people all over the country and throughout the world that sit there and listen to our blue show. Like I said, it, it has come full circle. And like I said, what a great event. And like I said, they've kind of worked back and forth together. Also, you know, we have the very couple large towers on Rancho Pass. So we, our, our signal broadcast from Las Vegas, New Mexico, past Walsenburg, and you know, you know, depending on where you're at, you know, some people say they have some in Pueblo, but we're not city grade in Pueblo. So it, depending on where you're at, so we have multiple towers uh, in Walsenburg, Angel Fire on top of the pass. And uh, the we have do contests, you know, Recently, we were starting to sample doing text to win. And uh, let's say we don't text this number to win any money tickets. You we, know. We, lo we love you, Rick. We're on, we're on a quick yeah. thing here. So yeah. let's exactly. talk we about we, we know what his year is yeah, all about. Sure, exactly. Please go ahead. So how does everybody feel about these numbers? Well, we still haven't de determined the, the money, the tax money. Mm -hmm. So it, that's got to, everything's right. got to be on hold. Okay, so if if, uh, if the money's there, yes. If the money's there, and and it's there for this this year, uh -huh. yes. right now. Uh -huh. I'm good. This yeah. is an ongoing program. So, this was an ongoing program. Yeah, we've done it. We've done it. Every, we've done it for the last few years. At yeah. least three, maybe four. Um, so is this a motion? Um, you I'd like to make one. Okay, can somebody make a motion? I motion. I'll second. second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, there you go. Great job. Thank you. Yeah, you didn't have to tell them. Well, anyway, well, okay. anyway, we love it. I mean, first of all, I mean, we have, we have two and, board members. And, and, and there again, like I said, I do want to say one last thank you. You're first welcome. of all, I thank you for being on the board. And I thank the one for the last 25 years or more that we sit there and we've done this journey. So thank, yeah. you, for, thank you for thank you for um, thanks, Rick. So, Chairman, okay. Chairman what we'd like to do is, is um, do cardio next and then we just want to move that tourism survey down. Okay. Um, Andrew needs to talk to you about the skill board. Okay, K R D. And if there's anything that we can do to help, please let us know. We will. Thank you. <laughs> we'll call you Rick. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chairman. Good morning, members of the board. Um, I'm here today to uh, understand what our next step is in the presentation that I made to the board um, at the last meeting. So if you could give me some direction on what your thoughts are and I think we need to, I, I, I think what we need is a work session. I do think we need a work session with you. Okay. I mean, with us. I think it's yeah. an unbudgeted yeah. item right now. Yeah. Um, we chair, have not had a work session. It's an unbudgeted item and we've got our lodging yeah. tax discussion sure. ongoing. Yeah. Um, so. so that's probably the big part of where it's at mm -hmm. is that um, our money is tight this year mm -hmm. and we need, we're starting to get our budget ready for next year so it takes a work session for us to go through it. Okay. And I would, would say the cool. next work session takes place. I would say this is probably a discussion when we do our 2019 marketing plan yeah. for next year. So yeah. we're probably talking about September. Okay. Um, so, um, actually, I would like to address some of the things that I've heard today um, mm -hmm. in terms sure. of Andrew's yeah. presentation. Sure. And I would like to address some of those things mm -hmm. as well. Um, so, uh, some of the things that um, Andrew talked about is working with a vendor who could provide some of the products that he's talking about, email marketing, Facebook marketing, etc. And KRDO has those 
or has those capabilities to do that. So I would uh, welcome the opportunity to sure. work with Tara and with Andrew and find out what the uh, objectives are in terms of the impressions and the cost per thousand that you're looking for to address and submit a proposal. Um, in terms I of, think, we can, well, we I can provide we'll, email marketing, Facebook, yeah. And social marketing products yeah. as well. I well, think when the tourism be, board gets ready to go mm -hmm. toward a marketing entity, what we would do is submit an RFP yeah, that's what I was requesting saying. proposals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So All right. We can't. Although, although we think you're lovely and wonderful, we need to do it with request for proposal on an RFP so that we don't show um, favoritism. Favoritism. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I would yeah. definitely do that. As a matter of fact, I'm. Um, I work with the city of Raptown uh, Tourism Board, or the mm -hmm. city largest tax, and there is mm -hmm. an RFP structure as well that mm -hmm. I go through in order to submit. So sometime in the next undetermined period of time, I don't know if that's 30 days or six months, mm -hmm. we'll put one together and, and Andrew will be um, part of that and Tara, and then we'll let you know when we post it. Okay. Um, there is actually a product that I would like to uh, propose to you as well in terms of digital marketing. Um, we have programmatic uh, internet products and we can target people who are interested in tourism and tourism in Southern Colorado. We can do it based on geographic um, criteria so we can target within a particular area whether it's zip code city county state region or across the united states or globally mm -hmm. so we have those capabilities and we can also we do what we call a programmatic blend and beyond geographic uh, criteria we can also target uh, behavior so based on what uh, people are searching on their search engines based on their behavior based on where they're going the websites that they're going so if they're if they're going to uh, travel websites if they're going to travel in southern colorado lodging in southern colorado whatever it is we can target those people based on their behavior online we can also target them based on the content and the websites that they're visiting so if they are visiting specific websites if they're vis visiting specific travel websites we can target them based on that as well. You know, it just sounds, it seems amazing all that KRDO can do. Yeah, we have all of those capabilities um, based on the content as well that uh, people are searching uh, or, the time, or the websites that they're spending time on. We can also search retarget, which means that if they come, if a user comes to the uh, Destination Trinidad website, but let's say that, and I have to give uh, Andrew some credit because I think there is some work that the website needs to do in order to be more user friendly to people who are mm -hmm. potential visitors to the area. Mm -hmm. um, what we can do is if they come to the website, 90% of people who go to a website for the first time don't interact with it. Mm -hmm. They leave and then they come back later. And so what we can do is we can deliver impressions to those people. If they've come on, we place a cookie on their browser, and then we can follow them wherever they go and provide ads for Trinidad or Destination Trinidad, and that's called search retargeting. And so when a person comes back to the website based on the fact that they've seen additional ads for Destination Trinidad, then we can bring them I back to the site. Amazing. I think it's amazing. I think that you have tried so hard and you've been so wonderful about it, truly. I do see in the future, hopefully, doing something in Southern Colorado and with KRDO if we go down that pathway. And I think everything that you said is really educated in what we need. But right now, we have to go through an RFP process before we go any. Because okay, I'd be more than happy to do that because that has yeah. not presented, been presented to me up to this point. So no, it's not available. Oh, it's not available. It doesn't okay. exist yeah. right now. Okay. Uh, we we just started the first step toward that today. Yeah, and I think we've missed a meeting. We've kind of got lost in a few well, things that we're well, the one meeting was Fourth of July, and that's why we haven't had that. So we haven't had conversations right. since you came here last. We haven't had a meeting, meeting. to discuss about you. 
Yeah. So, yeah, and that's and that's where we're at. It's, yeah. it's 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 all about that, and, and we have other issues that we're trying to clear up before we look at the big picture. I, I those were my, those that, were when my we questions. We would have been today. talking about you. It was the Fourth of July day, Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. And okay. that's when we would have been yeah. talking to. All right. And we, we but had it's had not. It's not like we haven't. Yeah. Well, yeah. I do find it interesting that Andrew's presentation did not include any television, and so I would also right. recommend that you take a serious consideration to that. That's what you brought to us. That's what I brought to the table yeah. because we're looking at a regional effort. Right. And, um, uh, you know, just to share with you some additional information, I am working with the Trinidadio promoters, Jerry Campbell and Rusty Goodall. They purchased a, a TV campaign to promote Trinidadio as well as KRDO.com campaign, uh -huh. which Very features good. two homepage takeovers and a digital campaign across krdo.com. That's awesome. And so the goal of that is to increase the number of attendees who are day trippers coming from Colorado Springs, the Pueblo, and the surrounding area into Trinidad for that event. I am really glad about that. And then we'll, were, all, we'll, all, share that. Too, so. we'll all share that. And I'm sorry to cut you short, but I have our to go. I need to hear and so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so again, um, if we're going to be looking at email marketing, we, we gotta get and we're looking at any of those yeah. other things, I would request that KRDO be given the opportunity sure. to submit a proposal for we, those we particular are. items because we can provide those products. We're not cutting you short because we don't like you. It's just I understand. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming and sitting through all that. Okay. Thank you. Just real quick, here's the billboard that's up on 9-10, so uh, September 10th. And then I'll put out one of these because the location from a drive-by view from the highway. Gee, did you take a ride? Uh, no, I requested that. Oh, okay. But um, basically, as you can see, uh, the price I think is six hundred and eighty-five dollars per month for that billboard, and then a redesign of that billboard is a thousand dollars. We have to make a decision today because I told him if I can't get back to him by Friday, he's going to have to start um, reaching out to other people to. Um, that have interest in the board to see if they want to purchase the this board. is that second board we right. lost the obese one yeah, before we lost the OBs. um and uh i guess there'd be a couple questions i have first of all what was our rate before uh 550 something i can look up the exact rate and 556 555 and, and, and so, so, yeah. so he he said that we're still below market rate i guess but yeah i went up by five percent or something um relative like that Where's this at? It's, it, it is yeah. one of the most popular boards, and I know it because I drive back and forth. Yeah, yeah. so this is, it's, it's right by, yeah, 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 I would get out of this. Oh, okay, all right, all right. You're driving back and forth. Yeah. So four boards. Pass that, yeah, pass that down mm -hmm. to, uh, um, I think, I know where it is. Okay, yeah, I thought yeah. that. So, um, I, yeah. we need a decision on this today so that we well, can. Are, are we going to redo the? The it needs to redesign. Yeah. It's a, it's a thousand dollars to redesign the board. Yeah. I would like to yeah. it. Uh, and is there any way that you can ask them since they've upped us that the design cost on this one time design is um, is less than a thousand dollars? We could ask. Uh, he made it seem in his emails that they're cutting us a break by only raising it five percent and on up to the market rate. Um, I, I, I can ask. Yeah, I Who does the redesign? Uh, they have a company. They, they, they have, have a company that does the redesign. Is it going to be by so show us a couple request. of different? Yeah, yeah we, we would have to. We would. Yeah, we would have to sort of encourage them on what we want. That they there was a time there. not only did the tourism board have more boards. I when I had the old Holiday Inn. I that was the era that you had boards. So I, I must have had three or four just Holiday Inn boards at the time. Um, uh, so the redesign wouldn't be right away. The redesign would probably be. October, November, December That's when fine. it came up. But we have to renew. September 10th is when the board, uh, when when we lose the contract for the board. And if we, we have the money to renew this now. We budgeted at the old cost. Um, we can move some things around if you want to continue to hold on to the spill board. Why do I? I think we should. Yeah, this I is think the we one, should. This yeah. is the one board. So if, um, one board if you guys like, we would need a motion um, to approve the renewal of the board I for $685 a month. Yeah. Right. And then we. I move we approve the renewal and redesign. Yes. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay. Perfect. I just have one item on the director's report. Okay. It relates to the tourism tax. Um, 
I know our city attorney just stopped by earlier, didn't really have anything. I, I caught him before he left to say the city manager and the city attorney have different opinions at this point of where we stand on what the lodging tax can be used for. The city manager has engaged a Denver firm to get a second legal opinion. So that's happening right now. And um, the city manager was not available to be at your meeting this month, this time as he's in a Cortez presenting for a Department of Local Affairs project. Our next scheduled meeting is to be held on August the 1st. I have checked his calendar. It appears he's available. I am pressing to have that legal opinion done by that date so that we can meet with the city manager and have a discussion. The one piece of feedback I need from you, my thought going into that discussion would be to provide you with a list of every single charge that's happened this year from January 1st through, that'll be July 31st and a brief explanation of what that charge was because I feel like we're going to need to categorize those charges and have a discussion with him over which it may need to be as detailed as what is can I what is his sure. what is his opinion as everything that work that's coming out of this money now he wants to leave it there or in is general, he willing to take anything out of there, or is he? I would say in general, I, I don't want to speak for him. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kress, I'm really not trying to be vague. Um, the initial reaction was that everything that was in there belonged and it was appropriate. And then Les's legal opinion bumped up against that. I think Les has met with every council member. Uh, Greg has met with every council member. Um, I have not been in those meetings, so I, I can't give you an accurate answer as to whether he's bet some and will say this, this, or this salary may come out. I'm moving Raven's salary out of the tourism board and putting in an economic development as of August 1. So by the time we meet next, Raven will be 100% in economic development. We've rewritten her job description. It doesn't mean that she won't be doing some things for tourism board but she'll be creating a, um, a timesheet of what she specifically does and how much time that takes and we can discuss that but i don't once again want to bring that discussion forward until we've had a general agreement of how the money can be spent i'm going ahead and moving that because we rewrote raven's description to be more mainline city business what i would like to see is is i would like to see how much money is coming into the tourism board. Okay. How much money has been spent? Okay. And how much money they take out for what they're taking out for? Okay. And then what's left for us? So we'll make a we'll make a list of every expenditure, and we'll categorize those like trolley expense. So there'll be maintenance expenses. There'll be gas and fuel expenses. There'll be salary expenses, and then we'll say welcome center, and we'll categorize those that way. And then we'll say tourism board expense, and then we'll ca categorize advertising billboard. And if we can provide that to you, would you say, would you agree with late next week? So you have it over a weekend and a couple of days to look at. And then we'll request the city manager be here for that meeting. Do you want the city attorney here for that yes, meeting as yes. well? Okay, so we want both Les and Greg here on August 1st. May I clear the calendar of everything else other than what Andrew's bringing forward? So that we have only yeah. Andrew yeah. and then the city attorney and city manager. Um, yes. It may take a full month. Yeah. It may take a full month. That would be a lot of people. Well, that's okay, fine. Oh, that's fine. Have, so that's actually you, better. So you Thank have, you. If you have one other thing to stick in there plus that. Then. I think we, if we can concentrate on that, that would be appropriate. And if we, we need to get this behind press the decision. Yeah, we, we need to we get it over. We, we need to press the decision so that we can inform the finance director which way we're going. The reason that we need to do that is we need to have an idea of what is staying in, what that obligates you to next year. I just want to remind you, my budget for 2019 is due to the city manager on August 1. And because we, he hasn't been able to be here the past two, two meetings, I am requesting that the tourism budget not be due on August 1 and be due instead 
middle of August because I think we have to have this discussion. Right. How can we prepare a budget other than the only thing I could send right now is the same budget that we're dealing with right now and I, I'm getting a sense from all of you that you feel like something should be removed at the very least. Right. So I don't want to forward a budget on your behalf that's it. status quo. Yeah. All right. okay? I totally agree with you. And I've been unable to bring one to you because I don't have a determination. Oh, we need to get this behind us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank